this has to be one of the most interesting aircraft like I've ever done. Hey guys, it's Model Making Time, and today we're going to be looking at the HAL-1 HA-300, an Egyptian supersonic fighter project. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the history of the aircraft itself. We'll also have a look at the aircraft in gaming and some RC equivalents. Finally, we'll look at the history of the model kit itself. So let's dive into it. Egypt, following World War II, had a mixed relationship with both the West and the USSR. Its independence was being influenced by other nations that wanted to use its territory for access to the Suez Canal, but also for its links to the Eastern world. This was an era of transformation for a lot of countries that were once used in a game of continental chess by European powers. Many former engineers of Germany had fled from their homeland to other nations such as Spain, Argentina, India. Well, that included one of the architects of modern aviation, Willy Messerschmitt. Today's video focuses on the history of Willy Messerschmitt, but also of Egypt's independence. Following World War II, Willy Messerschmitt had headed off to Spain and helped them develop their own independent aviation industry. And the most well known example being the HA 200 Theater, which was a jet training aircraft. It could also perform some light strike duties. This was a design of Willy Messerschmitt and produced by CASA, which is the Spanish uh, sort of aviation conglomerate, I guess is the word. Messerschmitt wasn't done though, and it started development of the HA 300. Starting with construction of wood and metal, a glider was produced, so a power version of the aircraft and it was initially towed by car and then by a CASA 2111 which is a CASA license built version of the HE 111. The aircraft was found to be unstable and there was worries of them not being able to access the Bristol Orpheus engine that they so deeply wanted to use for the project and Spain would ultimately end up leaving the project in 1960. It does appear that there was an overlap with Egypt's involvement in the project however as they took it on in 1959. The project was moved to Halwan, which is southeast of Cairo, and the name of the location would be used as the manufacturer of the uh, aircraft, so it would be known as the Halwan HA300. The project was quite successful and initially powered by a Bristol Sidley Orpheus, the aircraft had an amazing first flight. On 7th of March 1964, the aircraft took to the skies. Not only did it pass Mach 1, it reached Mach 1.13, and this was quite groundbreaking really, it was the first indigenous supersonic aircraft for Egypt. Well, I guess as well it was Messerschmitt's first supersonic fighter as well, right? But there was always a fear of embargo in Egypt. Its political situation with the West meant that they couldn't reliably source Bristol engines and they were constantly worried that there was going to be no supply, so an alternative was sought. Now India was also developing their own fighter, which was interestingly being developed by Kurt Tank, which was the uh, HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, uh, HF-24 the Murut, or the Murut. I'm not sure how it's there. India was viewed as quite a good partner, I mean, there was very low chance of them having sanctions or anything put against them by India. They were both trying to develop their own indigenous aircraft so that, and engines so that they weren't, you know, subject to the limitations of the West or even of the USSR. However, it did not go super smoothly. Although the HAL HF24 did end up in production with over 100 produced, the HAL1 HA300 was not so lucky. It's not really been settled what the real cause of the failure was. It's listed quite often that it was financial problems and India pulled out of the project as a result of that, but there's also talks that really it was Egypt who really pulled out of the collaboration because German engineers were under threat from the Israeli Special Service, which was Mossad, and that they were receiving death threats from them. So as German engineers left the project and left Egypt, it meant they didn't really have anyone to take over the project, and so it stalled. Egypt did end up a lot closer with the USSR and supplied their air force with Soviet aircraft and this was also cited as another reason for them leaving the project was that it was more cost effective to use Soviet aircraft but it sort of stands in the face of the independence idea of their own indigenous industry so I personally am more inclined to believe that the German engineers were threatened and that's what really stole the project. Again I don't have any special references for this but from everything that I've seen, it just seems like the more logical answer is that there was external influence that meant that they had to cease the project. So three aircraft are now on display and they are in the Deutsche Museum Flugwerk Schlesien, which I'm assuming the, the German Museum of Flight, 
and one is in display in Manching and the final one rests in Cairo. This aircraft was really far from failure though, it was successfully flown, it broke the sound barrier which its counterpart in India, the Maruts, never did. From everything I've seen this was a successful aircraft but it just had lots of points of failure, from Spain leaving the project to Israeli influence to India potentially not wanting to work with Egypt as well, which again there's been various speculation on and that was due to financial reasons. There were just lots of things that meant the aircraft was never going to, you know, reach mass production. But who knows, if Spain had stayed in, this could have really been like a competitor to the mix and the mirages of the world, really. I mean, if you look at it, it almost looks like a combination of a MiG-21 and a Mirage. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at the Hellworm HA300 in gaming. Now, I've only ever seen one example of this in gaming, and that was in DCS. So the footage that you're seeing behind me here is by uh, Sermar DCS, and it shows a mod for the aircraft in DCS, but I can't find any sort of references to it or links that still exist to this day. The aircraft is in Spanish markings, which now that you've seen the history of it, you'll probably understand why it's in Spanish markings. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that this very clearly got made, there was a flight model being produced for it, and then it's just gone. It seems to be lost to the annals of history, unfortunately. So there's only over one place I can see where this aircraft may have been, and that was in Strike Fighters 2. So you're seeing some screenshots here of it, and I've had a look on the forums, and it does seem that this was something that people had, there were lots of different skins made for it, but again, it's also been lost. People had it on the hard drives, but the sort of actual archive of it online has sort of gone down, and since then, no one seems to have uploaded it. Unfortunately, it seems like the two places where you could fly this aircraft are not really viable anymore, so hopefully someone makes this, but you know, War Thunder, because it'll look good in the German tree maybe, or they could make it for Flight Simulator 2020, because that would be fantastic. But hey, that's up to everyone in the aviation flight sim community, I guess. <laughs> so whilst looking at this, I figured RC Aviation is something I may as well cover a little bit as well. And I just find one person who had made a, uh, a replica HA300. So what you're seeing here is, well, the username's on the screen, so I'm pretty sure you can't say it out loud, but they've made an RC version of the Hell One HA300, and I urge you to go watch the full video, but this is powered by an 8kg uh, Ren turbine as a like, miniature jet-powered beast. It's interesting because I thought this project would have more information available to it, but it seems like a lot of the information about where the project failed has not really been released, but it's good to see that people are still making this fly even if it's not at full scale. So it's time to look at the history of the models, and this is by ANA Models. This was produced in 2018 and I'm not sure it's still in production, there are lots of reasons obviously behind that, but it does seem to be in quite plentiful supply at the moment. Uh, I can see it online available for between 25 to 30 euros and it's the same in Great British Pound as well. I'm sure whatever your local currency it's going to be around the same price hopefully. Obviously you're going to have to look at part two of this video to see what I think of the model and how mine turned out, but there were other model kits of this produced as well. The ANA model is the only injection molded kit of this aircraft featuring both an injection molded canopy, thank lord, and also injection parts for you know, the actual model kit itself. It comes with some photo etch parts as well, and some of the parts I'm not like, well, watch part two and you'll see why I'm not super thrilled on them, but you know, it's an injection molder kit at the end of the day, it's way more accessible to a lot of people than resin is. And all the other model kits of this are all in resin, in both 172nd scale and in 148 scale. Now the 148 scale is by Mar Models and I can't find any information on it, in fact even Scalemates doesn't really have much information on it. There seems to have been two boxings of it, I'm not really sure what the release dates were, I couldn't find any reviews of it online either, but it does seem that there is a 148 scale version out there. There is also the 172nd scale version released originally in 2001 by um, Classic Planes and released sometime in the 2010s uh, as a second pressing, but it seems like that's that's it for this aircraft. It has more produced than the Maru, but that doesn't surprise me because Indian Aviation has been massively overlooked um, by all kit manufacturers, to be perfectly honest. But yeah, really, your options are either find a older Classic Planes resin version if you want it in 172nd, find the Impossible resin version 148 if you want it in that, or if you want to 
probably the best quality build is probably going to be the injection molded one. It's much newer, it's going to be much crisper, but that's not to say you couldn't get best results of any of them. Well that's it for part one of this video. I've never done these in part one and two before, but my videos were getting really, really long. You know, they were reaching like 40 minutes and it was suggested maybe I should split them into part one and part two. So part one is just looking at the history and then part two, which I'll have to see next week, is going to have the actual model kit produced itself. So can't maybe check it out. If you like what you're seeing here today, please hit the subscribe button. It really does help a girl out. And make sure you do like and leave a comment. It helps me with the almighty algorithm. If you do want to support me and help fund my projects, you can head over to Ko-fi and drop me a donation there, or you can do monthly donations as well. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next week for part two. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified of every new video on Mondays. You'll also be able to see me stream live on YouTube. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Have fun modeling.